So the first context that we have is the failure of crops in successive years put the farmer in a tight corner. A tight corner is our uh, highlighted uh, phrase and that is the idiom. So from the given options we have to choose which of the options uh, bring in the meaning as a tight corner. Option 1 in a closed room, option 2 in a small field, option 3 in a difficult situation, option 4 uh, in a meadow. Okay. So if I have to give you another example sentence, um, I could say, you know, she had been in tight corners before and but she always managed to get out of them. So what are we trying to say here? Is it in a closed room or in a small field or in a difficult situation or in a meadow? In a difficult situation, the failure. Again, there's a clue word in the context, failure. Right? So that's again helping us from the context. So the answer is option three in a difficult situation. Let's move to our next um, context. The effort to trace the culprit was a wild goose chase. So a wild goose chase is the highlighted phrase. And we have four options. Option one, a fruitful thinking, a fruitful hunting. Option two, futile search. Option three, ideal seeking. Option four, genuine effort. Let me give you a context again. I could say, I wasted all afternoon on a wild goose chase. So what am I trying to say in that context? Do you think uh, it's a fruitful hunting or ideal seeking or genuine effort? There's a clue word again in the example context that I give you. I wasted, which is a futile search, right? Meaning to say uh, the end result was not what was desired or expected. You know, it was a waste. So a wild goose chase means a futile search. Let's move to our next context. The story does not hold water. Okay, let me give you a context um, for this expression, for this idiom. The stuff that I used to believe when I was 17 just doesn't hold water today. Let's look at our options. Does not deserve appreciation, does not fulfill the requirements, cannot be believed, cannot be valued. So out of the context that we have here in front of us and the example sentence that I gave you, which of these options do you think uh, brings in the meaning of does not hold water? Option three, cannot be believed. Does not hold water means um, it's unlikely, you know, it's unlikely uh, that it happened or it's just unbelievable. So let's move to our next context. Raj couldn't pay the bill, so he asked the owner to put it on the cuff. On the cuff is our highlighted phrase. Let's look at our options. Option one, on credit. Option two, against his credit. Option three, in his bank account. Option four, in his friend's account. <laughs> I know for a fact that option three and four is illogical. We can immediately eliminate it. Uh, but Raj couldn't pay the bill. So he asked the owner to put it on the cuff. So the context again is very meaningfully directing us. But to give you another context, I could say, let's say I went to a shop and then I say, I'm, I'll take two of these. Could you please put it on the cuff? What am I saying there? Could you please put it on credit? Right? So on the cuff means on credit. Let's move to our next context. His statement is out and out a lie. So the highlighted expression is out and out. Right? Uh, what are my options? Option one, totally. Option two, simply. Option three, merely. Option four, slightly. So we're trying to figure out the meaning of this phrase out and out. So what could it mean? I could say he is out and out a capitalist or he's, you know, out and out a liar. So what does that mean? Totally. Out and out means totally. Let's move to our next context. The luxury car that they bought turned out to be a white elephant. A white elephant is our highlighted phrase. Option one, a rare article. Option two, useful mode of transport. Option three, costly or troublesome possession. Option four, a proud possession. Okay, so um, let me give you another context. Uh, when he bought the mansion, uh, he didn't realize it was going to be a white elephant. Right? What do you think it means? It's definitely not option two from at least the example that I gave you. Uh, a rare article, costly or troublesome possession, a proud possession. Okay, so again from the context that we have and the example sentence that I gave you, the answer option is costly or troublesome possession. So when you, when you refer to something as a white elephant, what you're trying to say is um, it wasn't worth spending so much money on it because it turned out to be useless right or not useful. Let's move to our next context. 
If you are fair and square in your work, you will uh, definitely prosper. Fair and square is the uh, highlighted phrase here. Let's look at our options. Option 1, active. Option 2, honest. Option 3, business-like. Option 4, authoritative. Again, the context itself is helping us, right? Or to give you other examples, other contexts would be they won the match, fair and square. Or the money uh, needs to be divided, fair and square, among them, right? So, fair and square, meaning is honest, right? Uh, it has to be done the correct way, the right way, the honest way. Uh, let's look, move to our next context. There is no love lost between any two neighboring countries in the world. No love lost between is our highlighted phrase. Let's look at our options. Option 1, stop loving. Option 2, not on good terms. Option 3, forming a group. Option 4, have a good understanding. So, um, let me give you another uh, context. There is no love lost between the writer and the publisher. Or... Uh, you know, they had a curious relationship. Uh, there was no love lost there. In both those example sentences that I've given you, basically uh, what it's conveying is uh, there is no affection, uh, you know, uh, there is no respect, right? So from the options give, uh, given, what is the meaning? Option two, not on good terms. There is no love lost between means that they are not on good terms. Let's move to our next context. The heavy downpour played havoc in the coastal area. Played havoc is our highlighted phrase. Option one, cost destruction. Option two, cost disease. Uh, option three, cost floods. Option four, cost hardship. So played havoc. Let me give you a, another context. Stormy conditions played havoc with the fishing. Right? It's definitely not cost disease or cost hardship or cost floods um, cost destruction havoc means destruction okay um, so option one is our answer for the ninth one uh, the last one tenth one to have a green thumb means so what does that expression mean what does this idiom green thumb mean let's look at our options option one one's nails are painted green option two one is artistic option three to have a natural interest in gardening option four one has a green tattoo on the thumb. So um, again, let me give you another context. My mother has a green thumb when it comes to house plants. What am I trying to convey there? She has a natural interest in gardening, right? So that's what green thumb means. It's option three. So um, we've looked at a couple of um, idiomatic phrases or idioms and uh, seen how it brings in the meaning in a context as well but it's always good to expand your knowledge on uh, as many idioms as possible like I said earlier uh, in the beginning of the session it will help us in understanding context uh, or understanding the theme it could be a close passage it could be reading comprehension um, uh, you know it could be theme detection so keep practicing and I will see you guys uh, on another topic in another session